there are a record high number of gun sales right now among black Americans. According to the National Shooting Sports Foundation, in the first quarter of last year, 90% of gun retailers reported an increase in black customers. And joining me now to discuss is MSNBC columnist Hayes Brown. Hayes, I'm obsessed with this story because I really think, you know, there are a lot of jokes about how black people will survive anything. <laughs> um, and we, we sometimes see the matrix early. <laughs> um, but in the NBC News piece, a man who had purchased a gun after the Buffalo shooting said, a lot of black people had the same idea, saying, quote, it's getting bad when someone specifically targets black people to shoot. We have to be prepared to fight back, and you can't survive bringing a knife to a gunfight or a pen to a test, quote Jay-Z. So what is the feeling among black Americans right now? Um, because this uptick really started during the racial reckoning protests in 2020. Right, and that, it makes sense on a certain level that in the midst of all this upheaval, in the midst of all this uncertainty, that black Americans, especially those who don't feel protected by the state, want to make sure that they can protect themselves and their family. Like when the police, who are supposed to be the ones who enforce the law, who are authorized to use violence on behalf of the state, are using that violence against you and your family and the people in your community, it makes sense that, that they want to go out and be able to say, no, I want to protect myself. It makes sense on that level, but... I feel like it falls under into a lot of the fallacies that we hear in terms of the gun debate in general. And that's where I hesitate to fully back like this idea that, yes, black people go out to gun stores, get these guns to protect yourselves. I mean, one of the things that happens, you know, we've saw, we've seen it in some cases, like in the case of Fernando Castile, a black person with a gun, whether it's legal or not, um, can be seen as threatening. So. Um, talk about that difference. I mean, talk about the difference in perception of black people buying guns for self-defense and white people who say they're buying AR-15s for that same reason. I think that they're, they're buying it for self-defense, but I think mm -hmm. that defense from different things. Yeah, absolutely. And you've seen this uneven application of the Second Amendment throughout the country's history. Like uh, right after the Civil War, uh, there were many states, especially in the South, that changed their laws to say that, well, only white free men are allowed to own guns. You saw it during the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s when Malcolm X and the Black Panthers were trying to, you know, have arms in public and suddenly people were like, whoa, 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 what are you doing with all those guns? And started to want you know, more, you know, more gun control laws to be passed. So I, 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 there has been an uneven application of the, of the law on that front. I'd also be curious to know, it's not just the racial reckoning protest specifically, but do you think a case like Ahmaud Arbery, for example, um, could be a huge catalyst given the fact that America has a history of lynching and racialized violence? So it's not just that there's unrest, you know, in a broad mm. sense, but that you see black people living their lives being targeted by white supremacists. Do you think that people... The, the black folks and, and certainly the ones quoted in this story have an understanding of that history piece of, of this, this uptick or, or, or the violence that's causing this uptick. Yeah, I do think that they have a sense of that history. I do think that that's weighing heavily on their minds, this idea that I could be targeted at any time and therefore need to protect myself. But then you get into the same sort of problems that you talk about when you think about the gun debate writ large and the idea of, say, concealed carry of firearms in public or just open carry of firearms in public. The idea that if you have pe multiple people with guns in a situation of violence, the odds of other people, bystanders being hit, does go up. Everyone wants to think that in those situations, like, OK, if I were the one with a gun, I would, like, say in Buffalo, for example, if there were someone else in the store with a gun, would it have made a difference? I'm skeptical of that idea, especially when you consider, like, the AR-15, how fast the death happens when someone is pulling the trigger on a gun like that. I just don't know if someone, another black person with a gun could have stopped that level of violence, you know? Look, I, I think it's, it, it's really true. I, I'm not a subscriber to the good guy with the gun theory because even, even the police, I remember New York City, the police, um, you know, came to the Empire State Building because somebody was shooting and then they shot innocent bystanders by accident because they missed. So then I was like, maybe nobody should get the guns. Nobody should have them. Um, that's not really what I believe, but I, I thought it. Hayes Brown, thank you so much for being here.
I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.